All right, we're going to switch gears and talk about inflammatory bowel disease. And I got 25 minutes to tell you about management of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, which is obviously too large a task to consider. So I'm going to talk basically about treatment concepts and how it's changed over the years since I first started treating patients uh, 37 years ago with inflammatory bowel disease. So what are our treatment goals, both for Crohn's and, and for um, ulcerative colitis? The goal is to maintain response and remission. We want to prevent complications. We really want to improve quality of life, limit hospitalizations, and limit surgeries. So we'll start out with ulcerative colitis. If you could advance, please. So in 2014, a number of uh, international experts, 33 or so of them, got together in Amsterdam, and they said, OK, what should be the, the, what should we be looking for if we're going to achieve success in managing patients with ulcerative colitis? Now, I emphasize when I first started treating patients, again, this is 37 years ago, all we could do was see if we can control the bleeding, see if we can make the patient feel better, but we really weren't impacting the natural history of the disease. And all we had back then were corticosteroids, antibiotics, and azulfidine, and there wasn't much beyond that. Well, with the advent of the biologics, things have changed dramatically, so they thought, they sat down and decided what should now be focused, what should be our target of therapy in dealing with patients with ulcerative colitis? Well, the obviously underlying principle was control inflammation, stop the rectal bleeding, achieve an endoscopic score of zero to one. And by that, I mean zero is a normal appearing endoscopic appearance to the colon. A one may be mild granularity, mild erythema, but for all intents and purposes, a very mild case of ulcerative colitis. Normalization of bowel habits. Now, they did not go to histopathology, and we'll find later on that that may be a reasonable thing to consider as well, as we've learned more since 2014. But it's gotten to the point now, if any new drug is going to be approved for the management of inflammatory bowel disease, it has to be associated with mucosal healing or this achievement of, it, of a low endoscopic score. So if it doesn't pass the muster on mucosal healing, it won't get approved. So this is a post hoc analysis of a large trial called ACT-1 and ACT-2. And they looked at what, what does mucosal healing mean in terms of, of is it a, if, why is it such a lofty target, and what, what does it mean to our patients? Well, if you achieve an endoscopic score of zero, in other words, you completely heal the mucosal surface, the likelihood of that patient staying in clinical remission at one year is 73%, which is dramatic. If you don't achieve the mucosal healing, the results are based on how bad the mucosa is. So if they've got a three, which is really severe disease, ulcerated, friable, terrible looking mucosa, the chance of them doing well in one year is less than 10%. So achieving mucosal healing really does have clinical implications. 